Hey, Neil. Um, thank you for taking time to meet with me. I have a case that I wanted to bring to you. Mm -hmm. And um, Jamie has a client whose name is Jane Smith, and she wants to go to City College. She wants to major in lab tech, mm -hmm. and that seemed to make sense. She got accepted in the institution, um, and now they're asking us to pick up the cost for interpreting services. So um, Jamie doesn't really know how to respond to that request and, um, or how to negotiate it with the college. So ask me for help, and I'm coming to you to advise me on what steps we should take. Yeah, this is it's one of those frustrating things. I mean, we've been through this before with uh, community colleges, and they, they just don't seem to be aware of their responsibilities to provide accommodations under the ADA. And uh, so I'm not sure yeah. we want to, I'm not sure we want to get involved in any kind of just paying for the interpreter services just because they're saying they don't want to. I'm, I'm wondering if we should develop kind of a plan to, to kind of meet with them and, and uh, just review with them what their responsibilities are um, and, and just, you know, almost educate them about what they're required to do when a, when a deaf person requests interpreter services and communication access for, for any kind of program that they're in. I think we should start with that. I mean, what are your thoughts on that, having a meeting? I agree with you. I think that would be a good first start. I thought maybe we could ask if they've had any experience having deaf students in their college and uh, what came of that. Um, did they take responsibility for that or who did? Do you think that would be a good opening question? Yeah, maybe start with that. Just get some preliminary information first and then um, then set up a meeting and just really kind of let them know that what our experience has been with other schools um, and, and what they've done to fulfill their requirements to pay for these, uh, these interpreter costs. They may not even be aware of how to obtain interpreters, um, the whole interpreter referral system. Uh, you know, they just may, may not be aware of it. But I think, on the other hand, if we have such a meeting and they still say that they cannot provide these services for whatever reason, most likely they're going to say it's because of cost. So should we ask for proof that they, uh, they can't afford this, that, that the costs are too high? Is that undue hardship, I think? Yeah, that's probably where they're gonna where they're gonna go. But you know, and there's a part of me that doesn't want to get into a big legal hassle with them. So I guess I think we should be prepared to propose that we would maybe do a cost share, maybe propose that we, you know, split the cost 50-50 with them at the very least, and so that we don't delay our client's ability to start her program. Uh, I wouldn't want to get her all hung up in some legal wrangling with the school. So so I think we go in and we sort of let them know what their responsibilities are, but have a backup plan or a proposal to do a cost share, and hopefully they'll, they'll buy into that. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, yeah, that sounds good. I um, was thinking that maybe I would do a little investigation about, um, you know, PEPNAT? Yep. Um, find out if uh, they have information on what other states have done, what the practice has been um, elsewhere mm -hmm. in working with similar colleges mm -hmm. in trying to get them to provide interpreting and who is usually um, responsible for the cost? Do they take it on themselves? I mean, we could even say that other colleges do end up um, mm. paying for communication access. So, um, you know, VR is not responsible in those situations. So, I don't know. I think that's a really good idea. The PepNet resources are, are really good, and, and we could probably uh, contact them before our meeting and, and see what they could what they could provide to us. Maybe even some some documents, some handouts, some resources, so we can really show them uh, and get them involved in, in some of PepNet's activities because uh, that's their that's their emphasis is post secondary education, communication access. So I think that would be great. Um, 
there's a woman, I'm forgetting her name now, it's Jane something or other, that um, is the New England rep mm -hmm. for PEPNET. Perhaps I could mm -hmm. even ask her to meet with us. Yeah. And she can help it to advise yeah. the college. Yeah, she's Because I think that's part of her project. Mm -hmm. um, I think the grant um, does outreach throughout New England, but I think that um, it, it is, as you said, focused on communication access. Yeah, that'd be fine. She's local and... Uh, you know, she, she would. I'm sure she'd be happy to get involved. But like I say, look, let's have a backup plan. Let's be prepared to. I don't think. Let's be prepared to try to pay half without, so we won't cause delay. So, um, in terms of the backup plan, um, we will need to negotiate. You're saying 50/50 is this the starting point or do we need to check with the legal department about how much that might be? How yeah, we probably should check with our legal department, let them know what we're dealing with here. Um, but also let them know that we, our, our primary concern is not to delay our client's program. Um, hmm. You know, if, if hopefully they'll, they'll allow us, as they have in the past, we've done this in the past when, when we've r r run into the situation, do a cost share, and then and at least start there and then maybe we can down the road we can get them to assume the full responsibility so um it's june now so i think we've got enough time over the summer to start this process hopefully mm -hmm. and we can get that all worked out before school starts in the fall good all right and hopefully that'll take the pressure off jamie so she doesn't feel it's all on her you know we can we can kind of take take the role of meeting with the school and she doesn't have to worry about that um, and we'll, we'll just fill her in as to what our progress is and what our final decision is on the cost share. Okay. All right, sounds good. Sounds like a plan. Yeah, it does. All right, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs>